And we're here today to talk about gypsy moths and plan treatments for the West Lafayette campus. And joining me is Professor Matt Genzel, who's a professor of entomology, forestry, and natural resources, and Adam Whitty, who is the exotic pest educator. Did I get that right? Exotic forest pest, exotic pest, forest pest educator. And we're going to talk a little bit, just a Q&A, kind of about gypsy moths and what's coming up. What is a gypsy moth and why are we concerned? Yeah, the gypsy moth is an exotic forest pest. Uh, it eats uh, the leaves of um, hundreds of species of hardwoods trees, but prefers oaks. It was brought here in 1869 by uh, an astronomer and, and sort of uh, amateur entomologist. So kind of by accident. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. He, he brought it here, well, it was released by accident. He brought uh -huh. it here because he was interested in breeding uh, a more productive silk moth. And so, and then it, really, it was uh, escaped in Medford, Massachusetts. And about 10 years after that, it was uh, discovered to, to it, it had began to spread. The infestation was okay. discovered there. And ever since then, so for the last 150 years, the gypsy moth has been, that, that population or the infestation has been moving westward. And, and uh, now it's here. Yeah, and it was discovered here last summer. And we're specifically, we're here at Windsor Hall. It was found near Windsor Hall, right? That's right. Yep, okay. it was it was discovered just over uh, off uh, by Windsor Hall, um, and the gypsy moth eats those uh, lots of leaves. So it can eat about 11 square feet of leaf tissue in its life, wow. and as such, it can weaken trees and eventually kill trees if gone unchecked. And we have a lot of trees on this campus. So that's why indeed. it's obviously a big concern for that's us. That's right. It's a concern for us. Uh, gypsy moth. The populations are established in northern Indiana but uh, this is the first time that it's been found in West Lafayette. So if you think of that, that 150 year spread of gypsy moth westward, you can, it can be likened to a forest fire that's been slow burning this direction. And this gypsy moth population here at West Lafayette would be like a cinder that blew from that larger fire and landed here. And now through this eradication effort, we're essentially going to stomp this fire out. Worst case scenario, if we do nothing, what happens? Right, so if we do nothing, uh, eventually many of the oak trees will die. Um, so the trees will become uh, sapped of their energy reserves and succumb to, uh, to, to the gypsy moth. Okay, so that can be expensive and a public safety concern. That's right, yeah. It could be a public safety concern. It also becomes a regulatory concern because uh, gypsy moth would then, there would be, this area would become quarantined due to the gypsy moth infestation and cause a it would cause its own, come with its own regulatory challenge. Quarantine, that kind of reminds me of the Emerald Ash Borer where exactly you have right. to monitor firewood coming in from yep, different parts exactly of the state, right. things like that. Very similar to with Emerald Ash Borer. Okay, probably another uh, expense there, another Indeed. cost yep. reason. Okay. Indeed. So Adam, tell me about these, this aerial treatment plan for the West Lafayette campus, because it's a little unusual and something that folks are probably not used to. Sure, so first they're going, we're going to apply two BT applications. Um, this is going to be early May. They're going okay. to be, and then it's going to follow up with a pheromone treatment later in June. So these two BT treatments, they're going to start in May. Uh, they're going to do an aerial drop uh, as a mist, and then they're going to reapply it five to seven days later. They'll do it again. Uh, this will encompass a 29 acre, acre uh, area, which is here at Windsor Hall and covering Meredith. And then it'll go north to uh, 3rd Street and south to uh, State Street. And we're going to exclude the uh, daycare center. These two BT sprays will target the, the first instar larvae. We have to make sure that it's the first instar larvae because once they get too big, the BT toxin doesn't kill them. The way that it works is that the uh, caterpillars will consume the toxin as they feed on the leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, they get a lethal dose of the BT. Uh, the BT is pretty safe to uh, mammals and all other animals. Uh, it, it, it needs an alkaline gut to release an endotoxin, which is what uh, these caterpillars have, whereas we have an acidic gut, so it won't release any endotoxin if we consume BT. Okay, very so, technical. And it, it occurs naturally. It's used Correct. by organic farmers. Mm -hmm. It's actually already sprayed on our food, That's on some right. of our food, but it's something that occurs naturally in the ground. But in this case, we're putting it at trees and uh, Right, and, this, and BT is, the this BT is designed specifically for caterpillars. Okay. We'll only kill caterpillars that feed on this. And uh, so we are going to have some casualties of uh, native species of caterpillar that will die because they'll eat the, they'll eat the uh, BT, but um, it'll be worth it in the long run. And it's not all the caterpillars, it's just those that are at that specific growth it's stage? Correct. It's okay. small caterpillars that, that feed on the BT. Okay. And some concerns that folks may have, like 
my car. My car is parked near Windsor. Is right. it going to damage the paint on my car? No, there's no there's no side effect on, uh, for cars okay. <laughs> with the BT spray. Hey, something you might think about. Yeah. And then, you know, if folks are out walking their dog, you know, that it's not harmful to mammals. So humans and pets right. would and not be. Right, we and we're also doing this around 6 in the morning. Okay. So hopefully there won't be too many people out in about at 6 a.m., but you never know. Yeah, you mentioned early in the morning at 6 a.m., but the actual date is kind of in question. And why is that? Yeah, so it always, it, it depends on the wind conditions that morning. Okay. So first we have to wait until, we have to monitor the, the life stage of the caterpillar and wait for it to be that first end star, to wait for the eggs to hatch. And then because of wind, we mm -hmm. might have to delay it that day. Okay. Um, and we'll just push it back to the next day. Okay, so very specific here, but this is just trying to get that gypsy moth at the crucial stage, right? To right. prevent its development. Right. Okay, well, and then the BT treatment is the first treatment that we're going to do, the West Lafayette campus or mm -hmm. the Department of Natural Resources is going to do. So okay. we're going to do two BT treatments. Two BT treatments, uh, okay. In early May and then five to seven days later again. Okay. And then that'll target the larvae and then any surviving larvae uh, that make it to adulthood, we're going to use the mating disruption uh, to target them. Okay. And Matt's going to talk about the main disruption. Okay, well I should mention too that you know when the planes do fly to uh, spray the BT and then, then later the pheromones, we're going to be alerting campus with an email message and with a text message on that day just so no one gets alarmed when they hear low flying aircraft right. and, and know what's going on. But there'll be uh, two treatments of BT flakes followed by a pheromone treatment. And the pheromone, uh, a pheromone is a chemical signal that in this case is, uh, in the case of gypsy moth, is produced by females which are flightless. And that signal, pheromone, uh, calls in males for mating. So it's an effective way of disrupting mating by using a synthetic pheromone. Okay. And this pheromone is dropped from planes onto, uh, that, that's, uh, has been impregnated onto little plastic chips that are dropped from planes. And these chips are, there's maybe two chips per square foot. The signal then um, is released from these plastic chips and it confuses males such that they can't find females for mating. This uh, pheromone treatment will target um, those insects that have survived the BT and it will be applied in early June, about the time that the uh, the adults emerge and start looking for mates. These chips aren't going to be harmful to the environment or to people or animals? No, no, they're, uh, they're very small. They're like one by three millimeters. They're going to be spread over 756 acres on the okay. new campus. Um, and no, they're not harmful at all. In fact, if you think about this chemical signal, it's only specific to the gypsy moth. Huh. So it's, it's, it's the compound that gypsy moth use for mating. So it won't be affect any other organisms other than gypsy moth. Will we be able to see it on the ground or will it be pretty uh, hard to find? No, because these chips are again are so small and there's only going to be maybe one or two per square foot. So likely will go unnoticed. And just to recap a little bit, this is the third round. This, so this will be, be in June. In June right. So most of campus will be, all the students yep. will probably have left by then. That's but. right.